can ever stop us. As we go walking, that freedom highway. Give yourselves a hand for being hard workers. 
You know why we have Gazelka Gulch? Because Gazelka wants to take away the rights to collectively bargain, just like uh, Scott Walker no! in Wisconsin. No! We've got Beard Way. Where we got Beard Boulevard over here? Because Representative Beard wants to make sure that we keep our transportation cut this summer. What do you think of that? <laughs> Sisters and brothers, if the Republicans get their way, their cuts only budget will eliminate 30,000 public and private sector jobs. Republicans would prefer to eliminate these jobs so they could protect 45,000 households. They'd rather eliminate 30,000 jobs so they can protect 45,000 households that make over $350,000 a year. <laughs> Preventing the largest layoff in Minnesota history should have been the top priority for politicians who promised jobs, but it wasn't. In fact, some Republicans have stated that shutting down for the summer will show taxpayers they don't really need government. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, you know, we have another one that Representative Downey did. He said that we should take away 5% of the pay of state employees and make them only get that back if their performance is good. Which means whose butt can you kiss? But sisters and brothers, I would say that the Republican legislature have one thing to do this year. Pass a balanced budget and have it signed by the governor of this state and they get an F for their performance. But despite getting an F for their performance, guess what? While 22,000 state workers are shut down without pay, these legislators are paying themselves! They demand performance pay for employees, yet they reward themselves for failure. I'd call that hypocritical. Their hope is that they, without a paycheck, they will force us to settle on their terms. That they will force us to push Governor Dayton to settle on their terms. We're not going to do that, are we? If the governor caves to their cuts, we'll return to work. But we'll return to piles of pink slips, waiting for thousands of state, local government, higher education and health care workers. The services we deliver, our jobs, our communities will be gutted. There's a better alternative, sisters and brothers. There's a better alternative. Tax the rich! 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 Brothers and sisters, it's time for citizens to tell the Republicans to compromise. It's time to ask Republicans why they are so intent on protecting the rich at the expense of everyone else. Raising our voices together as one, Minnesota can end this shutdown. It's simply un-Minnesotan to shutter our state parks, barricade our rest areas, and end road repairs this summer. We do our jobs. We want to work for Minnesota. And we'll give legislators no peace until they do their job. No budget, no, no peace. peace. No budget, no 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 peace. Who does the work? We do. Who does the work? We do. Who does the work? We do. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I now want to call on my friend, my brother, representing the organization, MAPE, co-sponsoring this event. I want to introduce to all of you, please give a warm round of applause to Brother Jim Monroe, the Executive Director of AIDS. To all of you here, I want to thank you for coming out today. All of us stand proudly with you. A great French, French philosopher once said, and I want you to listen to this, I said it Thursday night, as soon as public service ceases to be the chief business of the citizens and they would rather serve with their money than with their persons, the state is not far from fall. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. Ladies, ladies
ladies and gentlemen, and especially brothers and sisters, it truly should. We stand at a point in this state's history of either standing strong for the common good or allowing extreme special interests with a radical social agenda to destroy our middle class as we know it. State employees stand for the common good. Governor Dayton stands for the common good. In fact, the chief business of all elected officials should be the common good and welfare of all members of society, not just a chosen few. Where are the Republicans? They are standing with those who fund their political campaigns rather than the common good. And this is dangerous to us all. Minnesota is in danger of falling because Republican legislators value the super rich over public services that help those in need. Minnesota is in danger of falling because the Republican legislators have turned their backs on the middle class. Senator Koch and Speaker Zellers, how do you sleep at night knowing, how do you sleep at night knowing that the Minnesota you envision would put domestic violence victims at risk by closing the safe havens they need? How do you sleep at night knowing that the Minnesota you envision will not help low-income families escape poverty, but create a permanent lower class that drives Minnesotans currently in the middle class to the lower class? How do you sleep at night knowing that the services you want to cut will cause 140,000 individuals to lose their health insurance? How can you sleep with such a life or death decision? How do you sleep at night knowing so many of the homeless that you turn your backs on have children? What, is, what if it was your child or family member? How do you sleep at night knowing that 23,000 state employees as well as thousands of private sector workers who want to work for this great state are locked out because you choose to protect the richest in our state. What about the doctors, nurses, lawyers, and others who want to work but can't because the state is closed for business? If the Republican budget prevails, the Minnesotas, the Minnesota that we are all proud of, will disappear. We can't let this happen. Many of our members have said that, all, that although getting laid off will hurt them financially, they support Governor Dayton's budget plan because it is better for the state of Minnesota. works. And Minnesota works well when state employees are allowed to work. Yeah. Stay strong, my brothers and sisters, and thank you for your sacrifices. I hope that this spirit of shared sacrifice will remind the Republicans of how important it is to put partisanship aside and work with Governor Dayton to find a balanced approach to this budget impasse. Thank you. legislature wants to lay off or cut the jobs of 30,000 public and private sector workers, that's not bad enough. And it's not bad enough that Representative Downey wants to cut the jobs of 5,000 state workers on a permanent basis. 
but also the Republican legislature wants to cut local government aid, particularly to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Duluth. We like our city parks, don't we? We like our city libraries, don't we? We like our city police and fire, don't we? Well, to talk about the effects of the Republican cuts on local government aid, please give it up for the city council person from the first ward of St. Paul, Brother Melvin Carter. How you guys doing today? How you guys doing today? I heard somebody say that this thing might last a little bit of time, and if it does, people will sort of lose their attention and lose their focus on this. Is that true? No! Are we gonna get tired of this? No! Is it gonna get too hot for us out here? No! On this fight? Yeah! Thank you. My name is Melvin Carter and I represent Ward 1 on the St. Paul City Council. And welcome Woo! to Downeyville. Do you enjoy it here? No! Downeyville is the kind of place that turns its back on the poor, on the sick, on the children, on the elderly. It's the kind of place where high property taxes cripple homeowners and small businesses. How do you like it? No! Well, I don't either. I learned from, I've learned from my parents what Minnesota's all about at a young age. From my school teacher mom, my police officer dad, who always held a home just eight blocks from where we are today, where anybody in need was always welcome. One day, after a homeless man had spent a couple of hours waiting out a thunderstorm in our living room, I asked my mother, how did he know to come to our house? And she explained to me about all the people in Minnesota, in our community, who had homes that were welcoming, that were willing to lend a hand to anyone who was in need. As an adult now, I realize that what makes Minnesota great is not just those individuals, but for the long time, for the generations, that we have set an example from this house here to build a Minnesota that truly puts its people first. And that's what I'm proud of Minnesota. I'm here today. I'm here today because I represent thousands of Minnesotans who can see this place from their homes. It's raining out, and they're knocking on the door, but what does our Republican legislature have to offer? A locked door. Is that all right with you? No! Is that Minnesota? No! Do we want our state back? Yes! Listen, I know you know how bad this shutdown is. It's really bad, and we're feeling, the, we're feeling it already. But I want to tell you, if you want to see something even worse than this shutdown, all you have to do is look at the Republican budget proposal. That's right. Senator Linda Runback, and her colleagues want to eliminate completely state aid to St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Duluth. If they succeed, if they succeed, their plan would leave us with closed libraries, locked rec centers, fewer police and firefighters, and even higher property taxes than we're already paying today. We deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve better, and we can afford it if the richest 2% will only pay their fair share. St. Paul. Of course I support LGA, but guess what? I'm not alone. That's why we're joined in this fight by 12, 12 chambers of commerce around our state Woo! and mayors across the entire state of Minnesota who say this program has worked for 40 years. Don't cut it. Keep it moving. Keep it serving the people of St. Paul uh, and Minnesota. I got one more thing to tell you and I'll be out of your way. I went to college and I learned in college that there are two kinds of freshmen. There are those kind who know that they're there based on the sacrifice of others, and they buckle down and focus on executing well the task at hand. And then there's those who show no accountability for those who sent them there, who go and do anything they want to do, do anything they want to do instead of focusing on the task at hand. Now, for those of us who work hard, it can be sort of frustrating watching the other kind. You know, we spent a lot of time our freshman year telling them, you better get to work. We told them, you better get to work. And they thought they had no accountability, but guess what happened at the end of the term? Report cards came out, and they weren't invited back. We're here to tell our legislature that there's a report card coming. Yeah.
be standing out here in the side sun. We love you, Melvin. Thank you, John, Melvin. And by the way, person cut a little bit over there. We got Runback Road down there. There's Runback Road right down here. You know, that's where it is. Runback Road. Cut a little bit over there. It's a road to nowhere. Sister Brothers, Representative Downey says that even though we're the 10th leanest state in the nation, 10th leanest state in the nation for state employees, the 10th leanest state in the nation, we are the same as the radical state of Florida and the number of state employees per 10,000, but he wants to cut 5,000 more. He's called us beasts that have to be starved, and he said if you can find the work of the Yellow Pages, that state employees or public workers don't need to do it. Well, there's been someone standing up to him all session long. And the brother's name is Mike Lindholt. He plows our roads, maintains our roads. Sisters and brothers, a highway maintenance worker, give it up for Mike Lindholt. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Mike Lindholm, and I just wanted to be one of the people to welcome you to Downeyville. It is here where Representative Keith Downey is deemed to call us beasts. Beasts of government that he says need to be starved. Well, look around, brothers and sisters. Do you see any beasts here? No! The only beasts we see are in there. Downeyville is a disgusting place where the jobs of 5,000 employees will be eliminated permanently. It is here where 22,000 of us were deemed unnecessary, unwanted, and laid off. It is here where our jobs, whether it be working for the DOT, DNR, or any other places that have closed their doors, we were told to go home and don't come back. It is here in Downeyville where Paul Wellstone's motto, when we all do better, we all do better, has been forgotten. Because look around, brothers and sisters, I don't think any of us are doing better right now. It is here in Minnesota, nice has been erased. They are pitting neighbors against each other. Here where the richest 2% of Minnesotans are holding the other 90%, 98% hostage and causing irreparable harm to our lives. Well, I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but this is not a place where I want to live, Downingville. No. This is not where I want my children to live either. No. It's time for us all as one to stand up and fight back. We need to be heard. Yeah. We need our legislator to tell them we want to work. We are not the problem, and we are most definitely not peace. Minnesota Building and Construction Trades Councils, 
their members, their leaders, their rank and file folks stand here today proudly with you and we will continue to stand with you until we get this deal done and get it resolved. Yeah! Brothers and sisters, we are a humble group of people. We go to work, we bring our lunchbox, we sweat, we go home, and we attempt to make a reasonable living for our families. Our industry has suffered depression-era unemployment for well into three years. We are starting to come out of that pit. And now, now those brothers and sisters, those sisters and brothers that work on these roads have to go home again. Is that right? No! Brothers and sisters, not only are we, do we want construction workers to go back to work, we believe that Governor Staten's proposal to create opportunities within the infrastructure part of our industry, places, buildings that need new roofs, sewers that need to be fixed, basic maintenance for the values, the value in building, the value in our state isn't even on the table. Brothers and sisters, the bonding bill will create tens of thousands of jobs for Minnesota, and we hope that you want those like we do. Is that right? Yes! Brothers and sisters, we are PMers. We are practical Minnesotans. We are individuals that work hard, but no longer are given the opportunity. It's wrong, it's not right, it's not Minnesotans. As I had said earlier, 50,000 construction workers stand here today will stand with you in the future, and we will not give up this fight. This is about what Minnesota is about. This is about good Minnesotans. This is about what we're all about. We're going to be here with you. Thanks for inviting us, and God bless America. Let's keep this thing going, right? And one last thing. I gave a statement about when I had an opportunity to testify on a bill that was going to have a huge impact on our industry. And I talked about the organ grinder. The organ grinder was the individual that kind of took your attention as he played his song and his monkey picked money out of your pocket. That's what these people are trying to do. We don't need that. We need good Minnesota leadership. That's what's trying to come out of the governor's office. That's what's trying to come out of the House Democrats, the House Senate, the Senate Democrats. We need to get everybody back to the cable, put us back to work, put the construction workers back to work, give us a bonding bill. We want to work! Right?
college or a four-year university. It's impossible to get a job, let alone a good job, without some higher education. And this, these cuts will make it harder and harder for any middle class or lower uh, income people to be able to get that education that they need so desperately. Tuition rates at Minsky colleges are, and universities are going up an average of 3.7% this coming year. And with these cuts that Michelle Fishbach wants to do, it's going to be even worse than that. At the same time, there's been cuts to dislocated worker programs and other agencies that help the people that really need to get uh, some training to get that job to get back into the workforce. That causes our, our enrollments to decrease, and that cuts what our funding is even more. It's causing staff layoffs, and then they, we aren't there to help people with the services that they need to get through college. And then there's the staff that get cut because there's not money for them to do the things that are needed to keep them in college, to have the retention of those people so they finish and graduate so that they can get those good jobs. This all has a domino effect in our economy and we can't let it happen. We need to, we need to stand up and stand with the governor tax the rich and make sure that we don't have these cuts to higher education. Yeah.